From legislating in the California Assembly to representing Los Angeles in the U.S. House of Representatives, Congresswoman Maxine Waters is a fighter for justice and equality. More than a political pioneer, Maxine is also a wife, mother, and community advocate. Maxine Waters on this episode of Leading Women. I think she's a very successful politician, mother, companion, and my wife. She is powerful. She is brilliant. She speaks truth to power uh, more often than anybody I can think of right now. I started working when I was about 12 years old, and I worked in a segregated restaurant called Thompson's Restaurant in St. Louis, Missouri, where I earned um, money to buy the clothes that I was going to wear um, back to school in the fall. With 13 brothers and sisters, and, and, you, and you only had a mother and a grandmother, very difficult. And I believe the reason why she's so passionate now about what she believes in and what she does. I think it's because of her background and where she came from. My first husband, he had relatives here in California, and we decided to make the move. When she moved out here, she went back to school and got a college degree. And of course, her life took off at that particular time. I went to Cal State Los Angeles, and it was uh, quite a challenge. I worked during the day, and I went to school at night. I worked in San Pedro with the Head Start program, and it was a coming alive experience for me. Uh, because not only did Head Start involve the children, it involved the families, and there was a lot of self-development in Head Start, a lot of encounter sessions. I did uh, get involved and interested in politics, but as a campaign manager, before I ever ran for office, I managed campaigns. And at the height of the women's movement, um, I was encouraged by women who I had come to know um, in the various women's organizations I was encouraged to run. We organized very well and we were able to win. And um, that was in 1976, my first office that I ran for the California State Assembly. And I served there 14 years uh, before I ran for the United States Congress. One of the first pieces of legislation that I introduced when I went to the California State Assembly was a bill to save a woman's home. She didn't understand a bill that had been sent to her uh, from the city that had to do with um, an assessment for a sewer district. And so um, they, um, they were going to take her home. That I remember so well because that first got me involved with not only uh, saving home ownership, but it also led to some things that were done by the banks that were lending money and taking people's homes at that time. I created a lot of legislation that was thought to be risky, but the affirmative action legislation was one of the pieces of legislation that I was very proud of. Uh, in the California State Legislature, I simply opened up opportunities for women uh, and minorities uh, to be in the procurement process. She believes in the difficult issues which mo most politicians won't, won't try to deal with. I was very much involved in the Free South Africa movement. As a matter of fact, I led it in the state of California. And um, while we were involved in trying to free Nelson Mandela, uh, working with the ANC and um, other groups from around the world, in the state of California, I discovered that um, our pension funds uh, were being invested in some firms that were doing business in South Africa. So I created legislation to divest uh, from those firms that were doing business in South Africa. California was the first state to divest and Maxine Waters in, in how she uh, works her legislation, she developed the legislation for divestment, but also she helped organize throughout the country. She made it clear to American corporations that were doing business in South Africa that they were jeopardizing their standing uh, in, in America itself. She not only has crafted legislation, but she uh, has helped to organize the anti-apartheid movement. She was a she was a very well outspoken national figure. 
um, legislating in the uh, California Assembly, uh, doing things, a lot of great work in California and L.A. and all the areas that she touched. In 1990, when I ran for Congress, I knew more when I ran for Congress than when I ran for the California State Assembly. Going into Congress uh, was quite different. Uh, not only did you have a larger body, uh, but one of the things that I had learned before I went there was that it was not as easy to get your legislation passed, that the committee chairs were all powerful. Regardless of whatever issues we're addressing nationally, she's constantly looking for a link back to her district, working with the local legislative folks. So that, that was a major accomplishment. I created several programs in South Central Los Angeles. Um, one was Project Bill, one was Community Bill. Um, following the insurrection or the uprising, I refused to identify the uprising or the, um, the challenge as a, a riot because riots denote something different than uh, an uprising or even a revolt. And so I organized in public housing projects first in Nickerson Gardens and Jordan Downs Imperial Courts. And um, I created these job training programs by uh, opening up the gymnasiums uh, to training sessions. The most significant legislation that the uh, Congresswoman has, has advocated or championed through Congress is Section 108. Uh, Section 108 is a program that allows cities to use their community development block grants on a forward basis. And it's because of that legislation a lot of projects have been done. I ran for chair of uh, the Congressional Black Caucus uh, because I felt that uh, I had ideas uh, and issues that I wanted to deal with and that I could utilize the power of the Black Caucus to help move those ideas along. For example, I did the first HIV AIDS stuff in Congress for um, African Americans and for minorities. I created under Bill Clinton um, the um, funding uh, for minority aids. We work on so many things together. Uh, the plight of the poorest nation in the Western Hemisphere, Haiti. She has single-handedly done so much to help the Haitian people and to ha help Haiti uh, survive. I became friends with um, President Aristide, a group of 184, they called themselves. They, they were positioned as good guys and uh, they got the cooperation of our American government to go up and take Aristide out. They mean the government had, had uh, told him that you have to leave right away right now. I mean, you can't pack in the clothes, you have to get out of here because, you know, uh, the guys are coming. So he jumped in the plane with his wife and his daughters and they took him to Africa. The president of uh, the Central African Republic has been instructed by the French that he was under their that he was to be guarded, that uh, he was not free to go. So I tell you what, I'm gonna go up and get him. And uh, I just left. We rented a Learjet. We went to the Central African Republic. We were met by kids on pickup trucks with AK-47s and everything. We had them take us to the palace, and um, we made them let us see him. And we negotiated all night long. President Bakasa said to me that we could not leave, that they had prepared a place for us, and they prepared dinner. And I was getting very upset. I said, I'm not hungry. Finally, I said to them, if I'm not back in Washington tomorrow, you will have kidnapped me. You will have kidnapped a member of Congress, and you don't want to do that. And so that broke them down. By 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, we were back on that jet, and we took him to Jamaica. I think Maxine is reelected with such a high percentage of vote because no problem is uh, too small for Maxine Waters. While she is a very powerful woman, she's a very kind person. I did grow up in St. Louis, Missouri, and I come from a huge family. I have 12 brothers and sisters, and um, it was not always very pleasant. Sometimes it was a little bit rough. We didn't have a lot. Um, had a stepfather, 
Uh, my mother was on welfare at one point in our lives. She made the most of whatever she had, and she knew she had to work. Every neighborhood in St. Louis had a community center, and I uh, attended Bashan Community Center. I didn't know that we were disadvantaged or we were not privileged. I thought we were quite privileged. <laughs> My mother is definitely a role model, very strong, determined woman, a real survivor. My father, I do not know. I mean, I have not known him. My father was gone when I was, I think, about two years old. So I've never really known my father. Um, my mother is, my mother and my father uh, kind of thing all of my life. My mother is in assisted living, and when I go see her, she drags me around to every person in the building and tries to stop the whole place, to, wants me to make a speech. Uh, so she's, uh, and she's very political, even though in a different way. My husband was born in, uh, I think, Shreveport, Louisiana, was raised in Houston, Texas, and got a scholarship to Southern University because he was a great athlete and he was a football player. And he got drafted by the Browns. As you know, became friends with Jim Brown. He um, ended up, uh, after football, moving to Los Angeles where I met him. So in stopping over, I moved up with Jim Brown and we were living together. And at that particular time, Jim Brown had gone to make a movie. And I was left there by myself at the house. And of course, she called and wanted to uh, have uh, an event at the house and I told her yes, that she could come up. And that's when I first met her. He was just a great looking guy. <laughs> he was just a great looking, fabulous athlete. When I saw her, I knew there was a ring in my heart. You know, for, for her, I would say, well, wow, this might be the one for me. And, uh, you know, we just might get married. We got married and uh, we worked, he raised money and we did work for the Clintons. And uh, when Clinton got elected, to office, he asked him to be ambassador. And he became the first African American uh, to ever be ambassador to the little black country of uh, the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. The first thing that's very important is that we really do respect each other. That everybody see us, they see us as a unit, as one. You know, not to be divided on any issues whatsoever. And so that's what makes it so good, I think, for us. You know, as a family, as my wife, and as someone that God give me the power to be with the rest of my life. My oldest son is Edward, Ed Keith Waters. He is the coach of the varsity basketball team at Crenshaw High. He's an excellent strategist and a brilliant mind who understands public policy and politics very well and one of my best advisors. My daughter, is a public relations consultant, has her own firm, Progressive Connections, and she does a lot of my political work. She thinks I'm very smart. You know, she, she, she thinks that she can get an answer for me on anything. <laughs> because I used to tell them when, I, when they were young, I know everything, so you can't, you can't lie. I know everything. I think she still believes that. We have two grandkids, and she just love them uh, like you wouldn't believe. One of them worked for her. My oldest grandson, is uh, Mikkel Moore, who is the chief of staff in my office. When you talk about family values, when you talk about African-American families, you should just look at uh, Maxine Waters and Ambassador Williams and her entire family and just see how they work together, they play together, and they love each other dearly. Waters Employment Preparation Center um, is one of the Los Angeles Unified School District uh, institutions. It was born out of the pure knowledge and understanding that uh, there needed to be more opportunities in that South Central Los Angeles corner. So we consider it a jewel uh, in the community uh, that uh, opens its doors for all of those kids that have been dropped off of everybody else's agenda oftentimes. The school was formerly known as the Watts Skills Center. 
in 1989, there was a movement in Watts where the people of Watts wanted to honor her. She would go into the projects and sit and talk with the people in all five housing developments, which is unheard of for an elected official to spend that much time with people that have kind of, as she puts it, have been thrown away and left out. There are about 1,200 students who are there, and students who are in there for the GED, for computer training, uh, for nurses training, all of these occupations uh, that they can have real careers in. So I'm very proud of that school. Her ability to advocate comes from her knowledge and understanding, one, what are the challenges with poverty, and then two, what's the solution? And then the final piece is what's the motivation to get folks to take the solution to end and eradicate their, their poverty situation? The thing about coming into Congress is understanding the unwritten rules. And you have to understand who people really are, what they care about, what they don't care about, and determine you know, who you can have relationships with because that's very important. I think her early challenges were, were ones where people had a perception of her being, you know, spit and vinegar, fire and ice, and it's just the opposite. When you sat with her, I've se seen her in action. Um, she's, she's always very professional. Don't forget that in these legislative bodies, you've got people who come from everywhere. And oftentimes, it takes a long time to get the support, the cooperation, the number of votes that you need in order to advance ideas. And you're competing with conservative interests, conservative interests who basically say, um, this is America. Everybody can make it. Uh, all you gotta do is just pull yourself up by your bootstraps. It's not the government's responsibility where you're trying to explain that there are whole communities there are people, there are African Americans, there are Latinos, there are others who not only come from families who just didn't have a chance, coming up from slavery, coming up from discrimination, that it takes a while to get over that, that uh, it does not happen easily. When you find someone who has actually experienced pain, not communicate because you're around it or associating with it, but you experience it. That gives you a different perspective on how to deal with people who are hurting. I um, determined a long time ago that I would never be the pawn of the well-off special interest groups, the, um, the bankers, the insurance companies, all of those people that I have to fight uh, for justice and equality for the people that I represent. And uh, what I try to do is uh, reflect my idealism in the kind of legislation that I advance. The children of my era, of my time, were studied uh, by a sociologist named Lee Wainwater, who uh, was at Washington University. And he basically concluded that the poor children of St. Louis could never amount to very much. I don't know where Lee Rainwater is tonight. One of the things I think you must always do is you must pay attention um, and not treat children as little objects uh, to be patted on the head and encourage them and always tell your story about uh, your 12 brothers and sisters, your poverty, uh, your thought, uh, the thought by many that you could never be anything, you could never make it. I have seen her just uh, break those glass ceilings, uh, not just for herself, but so many of us who have come along uh, beside her. She is an unashamed progressive woman feminist fighter. She's not looking for any mandatory uh, or rewards or anything. It's just the people acknowledging, thank you for your assistance. That's important to her. She knows that what the past has done has not been relevant or right, and so she just does it a different way. She fights 
a lot of, on a lot of issues and a lot of fronts because she has a global vision. And I believe when you look at the HIV and AIDS pandemic in America and when you look at the Minority AIDS Initiative and what Maxine has done, you will be able to say and we will be able to say and Maxine can say that she has helped save uh, millions of lives. I love the fact that I have the opportunity to make things happen from time to time, that I can influence something. I can, I can change the course of things, I think, for the better. I think I would like my legacy to be what uh, she was a fighter. She fought for us. She fought for all of us. Uh, she had courage. And um, she helped to change things and change lives. Um, she was approachable and uh, we could count on her. That's good enough. I am so proud of the progress of our people. I am so proud of the possibility. I'm here with my family this evening, my husband who's a wonderful supporter, Ambassador Sidney Williams. He thinks I'm right even when I'm wrong.